Islam and greetings. Prince Aniel Bey, Divine Prince and Supreme Grand Sheikh of the Morris Science Temple of America, as well as the heir to the throne of Morocco, and I claim the throne of Egypt. I will, of course, begin by offering you this uh, picture in a print. It is suitable for framing. It is relative to you and your real story here in your land. The photograph is $20. The PayPal information shall be in the description box. And I hope everyone is doing well. Um, this isn't exactly the rest of the session, but I guess it is now. The rest of the session. Oh, before I begin. Um, this was a graduation present from one of, um, my classmates, she went on to become a journalist, a reporter up in Sacramento. I think now she's on TV out in California somewhere. And when I found this, it uh, reminded me of what I had to do to make it through graduate school. I was a truck driver and a builder. When I wasn't building bridges, highways, roads, and dams, I was trucking. I was doing California trucking. Uh, back then, the game was a whole lot easier and a whole lot better. I had a 1980 Peterbilt 352, 18-speed road range uh, fully transmission. She had a 400 Caterpillar in them. Now, Pete was a good truck. But I got to give it to this one company. It is an American company. And they build the Bulldog Mac. Think about a Mac. Now, as much as I love my KWs and my Pete's, the thing about a Mac, you can travel down any road anywhere, see a cornfield, turn right, that Mac will go right through that cornfield. In the KW or a Pete, you're going to have to modify the suspension, not on a Mac. And Mac was the only truck company in America that built its own engines. And Macs were a whole lot better than those Detroit's. You push one of those Detroits, those leaky things, you can always tell one of Detroit's been on the road. You can see the grease spot. You can follow her right to where she dropped her load off. But trucking was fun. Uh, back then, I had uh, what was known as a California Class 1 license. Now they call them CDLs. Uh, the companies didn't screw over the drivers. I feel sorry for these kids getting up in those rigs today. Besides, trucks ain't even trucks today. But that's how I got through graduate school and was able to take care of a wife, kids, and have time to be community spirited. Uh, while I was driving trucks and fighting for people's rights and things, especially children's rights to live, um, in the session that I did about uh, Chevron, which is Standard Oil of California, um, here is the newspaper article that was uh, written after the uh, meeting. I'm going to read a little bit of it to you. It says, stories conflict on attendance at toxic confab. No, 
No, they didn't. The Citizens Action League last night accused the Chevron refinery and two chemical firms of breaking their promise when their representatives didn't show up at a public hearing to answer questions about petrochemical health hazards. That is what this says. Now, the meeting had been called by the Citizens Action League as a follow-up to another League-sponsored meeting last week. The League had announced that representatives of Chevron, Stouffer Chemicals, which is another big poisoner, uh, Summer Chemical, other firms, would be present last night to answer questions on alleged toxic pollution of the community by local industries. Alleged? I don't remember hearing my friend Carmen as I looked at her two-year-old baby. I didn't hear her say that she allegedly had cancer. It's not what I heard. She didn't use the word allegedly. But the United States its big business benefactors, it's alleged. Okay. Uh, and Chevron spokesman Bob Williams said today that the refinery's plant manager, Robert Davis, which is who I actually wanted to speak to, he had initially promised to send representatives to the meeting, but uh, that the commitment was put on hold. After the Citizens Action League refused to let Chevron have a say in the planning of the meeting. Hmm. How what unmitigated goal. This is a meeting that I plan. And you want to have a say in it. I don't think it's going to go that way. You've got a business in our community and you damn sure will answer for it. But that is what this says here. This is where Mr. Davis uh, put the plans on hold because they couldn't have a say in it. What, you going to tell me how I'm supposed to act and how to treat this purveyor of poison sitting in my front yard? I don't think so, lady. And then at the meeting, League Chairman Crowell had accused the petrochemical industry of being equal to organized crime. Crowell said the industry's failure to show up justified definite action, which he said would be announced later. And it was. Me and the teams to shut down Standard Oil of California for three days until Richard showed up. Then he showed up. All it took was taking, I don't know, a billion or so dollars out of his pocket to get his attention. But that's all. Um, yes. And... On the session where I uh, told you about the a prophet's uh, trip to Havana during the conference of 28, um, I had to pull this out of the archives. I, I had to pull that out of the archives. And... I'm going to tell you what it says, which is why I have no illusions about the United States, and neither should you. It is not America. It is against America, and it has always been against America. Just because you hear America in its name, what you need to know is when you see or hear America at the end of, of, of the United States, you need to understand that America is separate and apart from the United States. It is the United States of America. 
And again, that little monosyllabic two-letter word means separate and apart from. I need you to get to learning that. The United States is not America. And if that is what you think, well, praise Allah, I am here to enhance your scholarship because you are under attack. Now, this is from the conference, 1928, and it's a, it's a memorandum uh, from the State Department to uh, this guy, Wilson. Now, remember, the uh, conference for Latin American countries is for American states that did not include the United States. It is neither a part of America, nor is it an America. It had no business there. Uh, former Secretary Hughes, this guy Wilson, the entire entourage was there to spy. They were there to spy. They had no business being there because it did not include the United States. That's a company, that's a corporation. What the hell are you doing in the affairs of countries? But let me, let me give you this instead of more of my verbal rapability. To, American, to the American delegation at the Pan American Conference. Uh, this is uh, to the State Department from Wilson. And they are talking about this brother named Dante Belgard. Now, Dante Belgard, he was a reporter for a Parisian newspaper. But the United States was still concerned about what this brother was going to tell the world once he left Havana. And I want you to pay attention to how the United States State Department answered Mr. Wilson. Dante Belgard, who will represent at Havana La Marique Latine and La Genelle de Paris, all right, is, from an international point of view, the outstanding Negro of the world. And you have never heard of Dante Belgard. You want to know why? And I go on. He is well known in all the chancelleries of Europe and is held in high regard everywhere, principally at Geneva, where he is the Haitian delegate. He is said to have aroused by his speeches more emotion and enthusiasm than any other delegate. He is said to have aroused by his speeches more emotions and enthusiasm than any other delegate. He is a man of unquestioned intelligence and ability, an orator of unusual power. And this is the conclusion of the United States of America Corporation. And I want you to connect the dots and you will understand better why the nation of Haiti is kept and is economically depressed and unproductive and disindustrialized state. Pay attention. He is a man of unquestioned intelligence and ability, an orator, of unusual power. He is an enemy of the United States. That is what it says. He denounced the American government for its ruthless slaughter of Haitian women and children. Um, don't know if you all got that in your twistery books or not, but um, the USMC is a murderer of women and children. 
But in the USMC song, we fight for right and freedom. And I guess killing women and children helps to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the... T anyway, um, this is what the USMC did. Let me see. Uh, he denounced the American government for its ruthless slaughter of Haitian women and children. It may be said that he has seen the light somewhat. And on his recent visit to Washington, is said to have decidedly impressed, meaning um, he was impressed with the rhetoric that he heard when he was down in the district of Columbia. Uh, he is naturally extremely Francophile. Well, of course, he loved Paris. He loved Paris. And this was the rest of that. And Well, while this is the rest of the session, where King Mohammed the Sixth sits over there in Barbara, I am well aware of its history and his history. Um. His father, of course, was Muhammad V. What needs to be understood, especially by the true Moors here in Al Morocco, what needs to be understood is where in this land, my uncle, um, Sidi Muhammad Bey, or Ben Abdullah, he um, he actually had his signature on the Constitution for the United States, which not only makes me a blood right heir, but it also makes me the known living heir to one of the high contracting parties to the Constitution for the United States and the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787. So while the United States tries to ignore this fact because it damn sure was not expecting me, all of the plans that it made, it made plans around there being no more Morocco, no descendants of his imperial majesty. Well, here I am, and I want what's mine for my people and for our posterity. I know you weren't expecting me. And your next move will probably be to throw me in prison. So not only will I be in exile, I will also be a political prisoner. Do your worst, it's been done before. And until you learn of the skills. In this age, I'm sure you're going to learn something because you cannot hide the truth any more. Can't hide it any longer. It's all going to come out. This is the age for it. Um, where uh, King Muhammad V, his father, Um, they, if I remember correctly, shortly after fake Morocco gained its independence from France, 
1957. Uh, after it did that, you know, it was, it, it already had a permanent mission at the United Nations. But they were formally inducted into the United Factions. I think it was, uh, what, November 27th, 1957. 1957. November 27th, 1957. Because as soon as the move was made... That is when the original Morocco was officially admitted to the United States. That's when it officially became a state. Well, now let's take a look at the fake Morocco's origins. You'll hear National Geographic and the Discovery Channel and all of these other Christian-owned outlets and venues, they will take you to that sand pile in Barbara and they will convince you that this is ancient Morocco. I don't know any Muslim city built by Muslims anywhere that has a blue damn city. Why does Morocco have a blue city? Oh, I'll tell you why. But this is something that I want you to see for yourself. And did you know that Morocco didn't even have a constitution until 1963? Because you see, in order to be a member of the United Factions, you've got to be a corporation and have corporate laws and bylaws and a constitution. See, that's a corporate uh, instrument. That's a mission statement. That's what the Constitution is in corporate parlance. And so Morocco didn't even have a Constitution until 1963. And the question that I would ask the present king of Morocco is, if you're so ancient and you've got a seat in the United Nations, why did it take you so long to draft a Constitution? If you're ancient Morocco, you didn't draft a constitution until 63. Until 1963. And you see, well, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there because the world is better off not knowing this. So I'm not even going to go there. But your uh, constitution wasn't even ratified and made up till 1963. And uh, the people, your royal blood, your so-called royal bloodline came from. Why don't you ask, oh, that's right, you didn't have one then, did you? Well, um, to the king of Morocco, why don't you ask one of those old boys who was hanging around your pops? Why don't you ask one of them if they're 
still with you, and I'm sure they are. Why don't you ask them what Kennedy said when it was proposed by him, when, when he was uh, advised of what was going on? Good old Catholic boy. Good Roman Catholic boy Kennedy. Why don't you get with one of those old boys you used to hang around your dad and ask them what Kennedy said? Hmm. Oh, that's right. You, yeah, because he can't ask Kennedy. Right. Kennedy was killed the same year your constitution was accepted by the United Nations, wasn't it? Hmm. Kennedy was killed on what? November 2nd, November 3rd? 20 few days later, you were admitted to the United Nations. Hmm. What a coincidence. Um, and <laughs> that's, uh, that's the rest of the session for that uh, second invitation to the King of Morocco to meet. So we can discuss bloodlines. Um, I will be back with another video. Um, well, I, I can tell you this right now. I, I can tell you this. Uh, Stephen Hawking for those of you who don't know who Stephen Hawking is, Stephen Hawking is touted as the smartest man in the world. You know, he's the scientist uh, who lives in a wheelchair, you know, speaks through a vocoder, uh, a thought translating vocoder. And I didn't realize until I read one of uh, his articles. And I mean this in all humility. Stephen Hawking is an idiot. Stephen Hawking is an idiot. Stephen Hawking, he is talking about we're going to have to uh, leave Earth and the new, and you know, and find a new planet to live on. This from the smartest man in the world. The smartest man in the world, Stephen Hawking, said this. And one of the priorities was the geological makeup of this new planet. And his priority was, it's going to have to have rocks. This is Stephen Hawking saying this. And he's supposed to be the smartest man on the planet. And that's because he believes Earth is a planet. For him to be the smartest man in the world, I'm sure he's seen a circle. And if he took a toy airplane and tried to land it on a circle, this should prove to everybody that Earth is not round. Because... A round object does not flatten out for the convenience of a jet coming in for a landing. Something round does not flatten out for the jet's convenience. Earth is not round. Um, oh, one more thing. I want you to get a glimpse of your future. I want you to get a glimpse of your future. This, this uh, attack that you are under, that I continue to tell you about and warn you about, you will find one phase of this attack. It has happened over in England. Now, the, uh, the channel is called Rebel News, which, of course, is one of those... Uh, internet uh, news outlets where you just get the straight dope because, you know, they're not just talking heads and they have no incentive to lie to you. 
Uh, it's called Rebel News. And uh, the video that I want you to watch is titled uh, Posh Climate Activists Pick Wrong Working Class Train to Block. That's the name of it. Posh Climate Activists Pick Wrong Working Class Train to Block. I'm not going to tell you about it until... Um, another video because I want you to see this and what I want you to understand what it is you are looking at what you are looking at are agent provocateurs that is what you are looking at and they are supposed to be climate freaks and global warming is going to be among the next videos that I do because there's just so much you need to understand and so these agent provocateurs, mind you, there's a cop on every corner in London and down in every subway station, every underground station. I want you to notice the absence of cops when these agent provocateurs begin getting handled by the people. And you listen to their ridiculous words. While they're holding up these people from getting to their jobs where they make their daily bread, they're standing on top of the train so the train can't move. And they're telling these people, you are not the target. So why are you ruining their days? I just need for you to understand how silent weapons for silent wars work. When you look at that video, you're going to see some of the elements employed in this thing and how situations are created by the government. You need to watch that video. It's called Posh Climate Activists Pick Wrong Working Class Train to Block. The first thing I want you to notice is the language in the headline of the article. And you think about every word you consider the source from which it is coming. It is coming from a news outlet. Uh, Rebel News got it secondhand. But the talking heads on the network news, that is how they put it. I need you to first pay attention to the words and how the words are used. Because words are used in order to trigger the mind to think in a particular way. And this is done through the fourth degree. Now, when you see that video, I need you to pay attention to these little things that I just pointed out to you. Absence of cops. How the, uh, the agent provocateurs pay attention to the crowd. Pay attention to the people. Now, they don't know that this was all planned and staged. They don't know this. They're just trying to get to work. And that is the that is the principle, that's one of the principles under which Columbia works here in America. That is how Columbia works. The government creates problems. The citizens are subjected to the problems. They suffer under the problems. And then the people ultimately look to the government to help them. This is how Colombia operates. And remember, Colombia is the attack word for the church to invade greater Mauritania and the rest of the world. When it unleashed England, France, Spain, and a few others that I will bring to your attention later on in later videos. This is in the tre uh, secret treaty of Verona. And when the Pope set those marauders and murderers loose on the world, they were told all the lands of earth are vacant. The Pope said this, and by his words, these morons who followed 
him. They were given other instructions. Should you run across a people if they are not Christian, you can kill them. And that is where the wholesale slaughter of different um, um, uh, tribes of Muslims all over the world. That's why they were murdered, because they weren't Christian. They're not Christian, they're savages. And you kill savages. If you cannot Christianize them, you kill them. That is how Colombia operates. That's how Colombia works. The District of Columbia, Columbia, Maryland, Columbus, Ohio. Why do you think Ohio has so many columns in it? Because it was Imperial Morocco. And they want to stamp Columbia all over it. Want to just stamp Columbia all over it. When Napoleon uh, was emperor and the French came, well, France had to f plant its flag. France planted its flag in New York Harbor. She is a green, god awful looking thing. And she is the artist's concept of what Columbia looks like. When you go to the movie, they got a little paint on her. And she got on a blue and white gown. And they'll say Columbia Pictures. Columbia still means Columbia. I don't care what it's attached to. It's still the great experiment. The movie studio out there in Hollywood. Yeah. It's Columbia Studios. Columbia Pictures. It is in honor of the church and her marauders and murderers that she sent here because there were no Christians here those murderers and marauders they went down in your twistery books as explorers you know them as explorers and they were nothing more than murderers and marauders and these are the people who put Morocco over in Barbara to erase Greater Mauritania and have it known as the United States of America. That lie is being perpetuated now. Ask somebody. This is a practical experiment. It's a practical experiment for you students. Ask 25 people where the United States is. You're going to get one answer. Here. It's right here. So, in the interest of the fourth degree, state the question, ask the question differently. Your question should be, what comprises the United States? You may even have to explain what. Never mind. Rather than do that, just ask them how big the United States is. What you're going to get is it's the whole country. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. The United States is a corporation, and it is only on the eastern seaboard. It is in what used to be called Libya. The Pope moved Libya to Barbara. But that's Libya, where the district of criminality is. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want if you want a, a print of the greatest crime never investigated, uh, the price is $20, and the PayPal information is in the description box. Peace off.